hi this is lecture 8 of mt triple to 3 so in last session what we have seen is some examples of sequences we have seen some of them are bounded uh, unbounded convergent not convergent that we have seen so let me just uh, write down what you have seen last time so what are the sequences the sequence the constant sequence this is uh, 11 for all it belongs to n then we had identity sequence a n is equal to n for every n belongs to n then we had a uh, sum of those two sequences 11 plus n for all n belongs to n then we had the product of two sequences 11 dot n for every n belongs to n then we had the alt inverse of the identity sequence so this is for all n belongs to n then we had the multiplet inverse of the identity sequence for all n belongs to n just starting with these two sequences we have produced four sequences you can take any linear combination of all these and then you can produce more sequences so one thing to observe is these sequences have used only the field structure of r so we have what addition multiplication added inverse multiplication inverse the sequence that we have produced uses only the field structure of r but we have completeness of R also. So, there are completeness of order on R, it gave us some elements, extra elements in R, not just the addition of two elements in the all. So, what was that? It said for every n, so it said for every a belongs to, for every a positive, we have this element root a, right. In particular, for this n greater than 0, the natural number is greater than 0, we have this element also in R. So, we can consider this sequence also. What is the sequence? A n is equal to root n for every n belongs to n. So, this sequence we could not have written it if we are only dealing with field structure of R because the order is complete, we know what is this root of a natural number, this, this we already know. So, this gives other sequence. Again, we can do the same thing, apply the addition, multiplication, everything, whatever you can for this and these two or this, you can, you can produce many sequences. You can take 11 plus n by root n or, uh, or maybe 1 by root n or uh, just minus root n. These are some sequences. So, yeah, so you should not ask now that uh, give me some example of sequences. So, once you know just two sequences, we are able to produce many sequences, the addition, multiplication, alt inverse, multiplet inverse, this square root, this uh, we produce because of the completeness of order and this combination, root n is an element of r, so 1 by root n should be an element of r, minus root n should be an element of r, so this should be an element of r, so this gives a sequence, ideally you should be able to produce uh, as many as, as you want, all of them may not be very good in the following sense see these are not very this two sequences are good in the sense they are bounded that we have seen last time and then in their convergent so now you need to check is it a bounded sequence is it a bounded sequence is it a bounded sequence what about this this is not very difficult to do let us let us just do one just this and uh, that should tell you that uh, the other things are not not very difficult either so let us let us assume that uh, this sequence is a bounded sequence so what does it mean it means there are two elements m and m in r such that we have this condition for all n belongs to n and this is what it means for a sequence to be convert to be bounded it means there are two elements of r such that uh, this is the condition. Now, wh what is a n? a n is just root n, that is what uh, it is. Now, I know something about the set uh, n, but uh, this is not, I am not very comfortable, I, I do not even know what this means. So, I want to get rid of this root n 
the, the this symbol root so what it is I, I i i take the square of all these elements because all are positive the order will still be same so i want to get rid of this root that uh, gives a square here right root n times root n is uh, just n so we have this condition so what does this say this says there are two elements of r such that for every n belongs to n we have this condition what does this say this says n is bounded is it bounded is n a bounded subset of r this i have repeated many times that it is not bounded not bounded not bounded <laughs> so this is not true this is this is not going to happen so what does this say this says this sequence cannot be a bounded sequence in r now we can also ask for its uh, convergence if it is convergence then we have seen i didn't prove i asked you to check it it's an exercise that if a sequence is bounded if two sequences are bounded sequences their product is a bounded sequence so if this is a bounded sequence this product with itself should be bounded sequence which means root n times root n is a bounded sequence what is it just the identity sequence n right is it a convergence sequence if this is a convergence sequence it implies this square is convergence sequence which means this is a convergence sequence we have seen this is not a convergence sequence so this is not a convergence sequence one can try the same thing for this and this and this and anything that you wish so one thing to observe is the following see we have not seen many examples of sequences but out of what we have seen some strange thing is happening unbounded 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 this, this i didn't i didn't write down but uh, i I'll, i'll leave it to you to check to check with to see if they are bounded or not so out of these five unbounded sequences five of them are uh, not convergent so let me write down that observation so out of five unbounded five are not convergent this is something that you should uh, that is worth observing so this is our sample set <laughs> if this is our sample set in the, in terms of probability the probability of a set a, an unbounded set unbounded sequence being convergent is zero when we are considering only this only this five things so there may be many unbounded sets uh, sequences so the probability of unbounded sequence to be convergent is maybe almost zero i mean it's not very high that that, that, that is for sure because out of five what we have taken five of them are not convergent so the probability of unbounded to be convergent it seems to be very low so let us ask the other question what is the probability of a convergent sequence to be unbounded it should also be very low i mean we don't really know that yet we'll we'll just ask the that question so what is the probability of convergent to be unbounded the question is the following how many times suppose you start with a convergent sequence how many times do you uh, realize that it's unbounded that is the only basic question so let us take a convergent sequence an it's a convergent sequence so i should give an element of r along with it right that is the definition of convergent sequence so something happens so what is it given epsilon positive i have an element n belongs to n such that some condition is satisfied what is it an minus l is a less than epsilon for all n let us just write down what this really means so this means minus epsilon less than a n minus l less than epsilon this is also true for all n of this form so see this this element it keeps on varying uh, we have a n capital n a capital n plus 1 so on this is a constant so 
I want to get rid of this constant. What can I do that? I need to just add L on both L on this this side. So the the previous thing is same thing as this. This is true for all n greater than equal to n. So what does this say? This says the set a n a n plus one. So on this observation. And this this being the context says this set is bounded right but we are trying to look at this being unbounded or bounded we don't, we don't really know so we got till here so we don't have any any idea about the image of the sequence but we know the we know that some partial image is bounded we actually have to say about uh, the whole sequence a1 an minus 1 an an plus 1 so on so to talk about a sequence being bounded we we need to say that this whole thing is bounded but what we know is just this is bounded now i have said this previously also finite sets are bounded if if you have not checked it yet pause it here pause the video here check it and then come back <laughs> so when you try to prove that it is bounded as a consequence you will also see that if I, if i add a finite set to a bounded set the result is still bounded so this is a bounded subset of r i am only adding these elements adding is not addition a plus b not like that i am saying uh, taking the union so <laughs> okay this set is bounded this is other set that is uh, finite so it's bounded so this whole set is union of two bounded sets so it has to be bounded so what do we observe here if i am starting with a convergent sequence it turns out that that sequence is a bounded sequence so let me write down that here convergence implies boundedness so this is what we have we have seen just now so let us ask the other question also suppose it is a bounded sequence maybe we might be able to just uh, trace back this uh, and uh, might get convergence we don't really know so th this is this we have seen in some detail so maybe if we can trace back we might be able to get convergence also we don't really know so now what i will do is i start with the bounded sequence and then ask that it is a convergent sequence a from n to r is a bounded does it imply it is a, it is a convergent sequence let us do the following let us uh, let us go from the very very simple uh, situation boundedness just now i have say, i have said any finite set is bounded so in particular singleton is bounded right this is bounded so if i take a sequence whose image is singleton an if it is the case then it is bounded so this means this sequence is bounded and uh, this identity sequence is a uh, convergent so for this kind of thing bounded implies convergence if the bound if the set is a singleton set so yes there is a there may be some slight possibility the uh, one example we have seen one uh, situation we have seen right boundedness implies convergence if the if the set is a singleton set fair enough let us uh, increase the complexity by by slightly so i said a finite set is bounded so instead of a singleton let us take two elements that is the next level of complexity right so let us take two elements 1 comma 2 this is also bounded so let us take a sequence a whose image is this so because the image is bounded this is bounded now we have to see whether uh, whether a sequence whose image is just this uh, set of two elements is it bounded or is it convergent or not that's what we have to we have to see so now the question is how do i even guess <laughs> guess the i mean I, i don't really have an idea 
of uh, we don't really know any examples of sequences which takes two elements. So let us first produce an element, produce a sequence that takes two elements. So now we have a sequence that takes two elements. The image contains two elements. A from n to R, A n is equal to one at some places, two at some other places. But the idea is to look for convergence or not convergence, whatever it is. Now to to be fair enough, let us uh, declare one. Uh, at some places, two at some places, in a fair manner. I mean, nothing is dominating the other. In the in the following sense, so for even numbers, we will declare one. For odd numbers, we will declare uh, two. I mean, so the sequence is the following: it is two, one, two, one, two, one, so on. So this is the this is the sequence. So, starting at so k is equal to 0, k is equal to 0, so this is uh, uh, 2, if k is equal to 1, uh, n is equal to 2, so this is uh, 1 again. So, so this is the sequence. We want to see whether this is a convergent sequence or not. So, this is a bounded sequence, it is only taking two values, the, the image ha has a, is a, is a two element set. So, is it a bounded, is it a convergent sequence? So, now we need to make a guess first. So, we need to guess an element L belongs to R to which this sequence converge, that is what we need to check, right. If this element is not there, so we have seen in the previous session that if a sequence is constant sequence, it converges to the, the, the element itself. Here there are two elements, so it is not very clear what guess should we make, okay. So let us not fix this to be anything, just hope that we get some idea after 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 certain stage, so where, where should this uh, live. So the assumption is the following that this sequence is convergent, it converges to L. So, what does this mean? Given epsilon positive, there is a n belongs to n such that a n minus L is uh, less than epsilon for all n greater than equal to n. So, this is what it is. So, let us just write down what this, this means. So, this means minus epsilon less than a n minus L less than epsilon for all n. Now, See, in previous cases what we have done is the following, we have said that L is constant, this keeps on varying, so we, we have written what? We have removed this L and uh, put L here and L here, that is what we have done uh, before. So that time L was known, we, we, we have some idea about L, but here we do not really know what L is. So we know what A and takes, it takes only two values. So instead of doing that, so let us just go back. instead of moving L here, let us move A n here. So what does this says? This says uh, minus A n minus epsilon less than minus L less than minus A n plus epsilon. So the idea should be clear. In previous cases, L was constant, A n, it was taking so many values. So, so we have moved L here. Now, we want to get some idea about L. So, this I am keeping uh, fixed and uh, removing uh, and, and moving A n to the other side. So, because we are not okay with this minus sign, so <laughs> we will remove this minus sign. So, the, the inequality will change, it will be greater than, it will be greater than and I need to add one minus here and a minus here. So, if I, if I add a minus here, so this is gone this becomes plus, this is gone and uh, this becomes minus. So now what do we have? If L is a limit of this sequence, L should be in this. This is true again for all n greater than n. So just observe, a n can take only two values if n is if n is uh, even it takes 1 if n is uh, odd it takes 2 see after after uh, n also there will be odd numbers even numbers so here this suggests there are two possibilities if n is even as i said here it takes value 1 so we should have 1 plus epsilon 
greater than L 1 minus epsilon. So, this is one situation n is odd also after a certain stage there are odd and even number both. So, one should also have this a n is a 2 at some places to 2 plus epsilon greater than L greater than 2 minus epsilon. So, this L should satisfy both conditions not just one because after n there will be even numbers and odd numbers. So, the, the, the L that I want to guess that should be that should satisfy these two properties. This says the element L belongs to the interval 1 minus epsilon and 1 plus epsilon. This says the element L belongs to the interval 2 minus epsilon 2 plus epsilon. So, th this, this is not very surprising right L can be in, in these two intervals what is the problem? They may, they, they may be uh, they, they may intersect. So, 1 minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon intersection 2 minus epsilon 2 plus epsilon it, it may be non empty what is the problem there may be L, 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 L in uh, L that belongs to these two. So, it is not very clear what, what is the problem. So, the problem is this may be empty. There are two situations one is non empty one is empty. So, the, if it is non empty there is no problem if it is empty I cannot choose L satisfying these two properties. So, the first question is when 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 would it be empty if you draw the diagram. So, for this to be empty we need 1 plus epsilon to be strictly less than 2 minus epsilon then there is no way that these two has a non empty intersection. So, when can this happen? I, I just pull it here. So, this is a 1 plus 2 epsilon less than 2. This this one is gone. So, that gives you 1 here and uh, this 2 is gone that gives you half. So, if I, if I choose epsilon to be less than half these two will have empty intersection there will be no element in the intersection. So, this says I cannot find forget about L, L satisfying the convergence and the, uh, uh, the, the other properties. I cannot even find L here the very basic property of L should be this whether it is I mean convergence may, may not really mean just this it means at least this. So, the L that, that you want to uh, write down that should have at least this property, but if, if you choose epsilon to be less than half see th this you can you can you, you can make a choice. If you choose epsilon to be less than half there is no way that you can find an element L satisfying these two properties because this and this have empty intersection there is no element that is common for these two that says this sequence is not convergent. So, what does this say? This says bounded may not imply I mean if you want to be correct in English bounded does not imply convergence. There may be bounded sequences but the, the sequence may not be convergent why we, this is the this is the example if, if i if i if i take a sequence that takes at least two values here there are it takes two values and if you want to be fair enough so we <laughs> so we, we put one for even numbers two for odd numbers because we want to be fair and and then it says the there is no way that you can that the sequence be uh, to be convergent bounded did not imply convergence but checking bounded is slightly easier checking convergence is slightly uh, it takes some effort. So, we still want to ask the same question uh, in a different way bounded does not imply convergence. So, question is when does bounded imply convergence right just this condition is not assuring convergence. Now, 
let us not give up let us ask the following question bounded plus what gives convergence right that, that is the question that we want to ask bounded along with what condition in place convergence plus something this is what we are, we are trying to understand now okay so to answer this question let us at least go back and check so what was the problem when we are trying to so let us see the issue here so here we were trying to be very fair for both uh, this the one and two to appear uh, multiple times continuously so nothing is dominating the other so that that resulted that the sequence is not convergent so let us relax our conditions let us again start with this a from n to r is bounded let us also uh, also ask it has only two elements in the image so the cardinality uh, uh, the, the 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 an is uh, just that's it 1 comma 2 let us ask when this is uh, convergent can we think of an example where the where it is uh, convergent so here in this case it was evenly spread so that resulted it is uh, uh, not convergence so, so so let us let us relax our condition let us ask okay it takes the the sequence n the sequence e. okay the sequence a takes two values that is fair enough but after certain stage it it uh, so so at some point this should become irrelevant in the following sense so let us declare the following an is equal to 1 and 2 uh, one appears only finitely many times when uh, after uh, uh, what i said is after a certain stage this should become irrelevant so so n less than or equal to 14 let us declare it to be 1 for all other elements let us declare it to be 2 convince yourself see if if it is only constant sequence if this is the case for every n we already know it is a uh, convergent sequence it can just to 2 convince yourself that this is also a convergent sequence so what did we observe here it can just to 2 or maybe i will i'll at least prove this okay so uh, this has some slight similarity with the constant sequence constant sequence so it, it is declared as as a, as a constant for every n uh, belongs to n here it is declared as 2 only for a certain subset of n for a finite subset of n it is a, it is 1 for other it is it is 2 let us see whether it is uh, convergent or not so for, for constant sequence the limit was 2 so let us consider that so let me write down this as bn bn is a constant sequence 2 bn is equal to 2 for every n belongs to n because we would not write uh, here 2 again and again so we, we, we are uh, just write, taking the constant sequence that we are denoting by b and, uh, and and declaring that it is a constant sequence actually after certain stage so let us just check uh, to whether it is convergent if it is the case to what element but here we have we have a candidate for convergence this sequence converts to 2 so let us consider that first so bn converges to 2 this means what given epsilon positive we have an element n belongs to n such that bn minus 2 is less than epsilon for all n greater than n we have a candidate for the sequence bn that is uh, 2 this is the con this is the point where the sequence bn converges so we want to think about the sequence an so we want a candidate for an now an converges to 
what? If it converges, it converges to what? So, because we already have a candidate for the convergence of uh, B, let us try to make use of that. Okay, so let us first estimate what can you say about a n minus 2, b n minus 2 is less than epsilon, this is what we we really want for a n also, I mean if this is, if this, if this is true for a n then we are done, 2 is the uh, 2 is the point to which the sequence converts. So, we will just try to estimate this, so what this really is, this is equal to a n uh, is uh, 1 for n less than or equal to 14 and b n for n greater than or equal to 15. So, this is same thing as this is 1 and this is b n minus 2 for all n greater than uh, 15. So, now observe that this element, this approximation is less than epsilon for n greater than uh, n and uh, this is equal to this for n greater than 15. So, this says if I ask, see let us take uh, maximum of this and this, suppose n is greater than 15, if this is equal to this for every n greater than equal to 15, it is true for also uh, this. So, maybe we can re remove this and simply write this, right, this, this is true, this is true for all n greater than 15 if n is less than 15, if this n uh, is less than 15, then you can simply <laughs> instead of this, see this is true for all n greater than n, it is true for all n greater than 15 also, right. So, so in that case this, this, this new n now, this is n prime, it is greater than 15 because n plus 15 is greater than 15 of course. So, th then you can write, write that n here again. So, this is true for all n greater than n. So, uh, let me remove this. So, here we are already assuming n is greater than 15. If it is not, just change this to n plus 15. That does not really make any difference. So, now this is less than epsilon. So, one can simply write here. So, this uh, n minus 2 has an approximation to be less than epsilon for every n greater than this. So, this says a n converges to 2. So, what did you observe here? If I take a sequence, see if, if, if I take a sequence a n to be a not fair enough sequence, which means it takes 2 at a, so it is not a fair sequence, it, it takes 2 for every n greater than 15 and uh, it takes 1 for every n less than 14. So, what do we, what do we need to observe here? So, this sequence is convergent, it converges to the point 2, this one became irrelevant after certain stage and uh, this sequence converges to 2. Okay, so, one thing to observe is the following, this is a bounded sequence that is fine, it is it's, uh, it's increasing also, right? it, it, it takes 1 uh, to uh, at, at a finite string then it is, it takes the value 2 after that. So, it is an increasing sequence. So, a bounded increasing sequence even if it is not really, not really uh, as, as nice as constant sequence, a bounded increasing sequence turned out to be a convergent sequence. What is this 2? This is for the increasing sequence, this is supremum of the sequence. So, for, for a sequence that is uh, bounded, if it is increasing, then it, it seems to be converging to the supremum of that sequence. You can actually <laughs> interchange this 1 and 2 and make it a decreasing sequence. So, let me write down here 2 and uh, let me write down here 1. So, this gives a decreasing sequence. So, this same procedure whatever I have done till now, there also you should replace 2 by 1. So, that says a this, uh, this particular example of decreasing sequence converges to 1, right. And what is 1? 
for the image of uh, a n it is infimum. So, these two for these two from these two examples what you have seen is the following if you take a sequence starting it is bounded bounded is a uh, that what you wanted to do right bounded plus something you want to see if it is convergent or not. So, bounded is, is given now if it is increasing sequence and uh, if it is of this form then it converges to the supremum if it is decreasing sequence it converges to infimum. So, this I, I am leaving as exercise not very difficult to see. So, bounded plus increasing implies convergent and this convergence is actually to the supremum of this right convergence means I should give some uh, some element of R right. So, I am giving this element similarly bounded plus decreasing implies convergent it converges to infimum of a n or maybe I will do, do one direction you can try the other thing. This is actually supposed to be a, an exercise if you are confident about this you can just pause the video here and do by yourself otherwise I am doing one direction you can try the other thing. So, what do we have? So, we have this a n. So, a n is a bounded sequence and it is increasing this is this is what we have. Now, because it is bounded a n is bounded subset of uh, R supremum is an element of R and this is I am simply writing as L. Now, what we are trying to do we are trying to do for we are trying to look at the convergence of this sequence. So, the claim is the following that this a n converts to L. So, for that what do we need to see? For every epsilon positive we need an element n belongs to n such that something happens. Forget about convergence. So, uh, what is the property of supremum? If I take an element that is supremum of a set and, and uh, if I take another element that is less than supremum that is not an upper bound for the sequence for the set a n. So, we took epsilon to be positive l minus epsilon is uh, not an upper bound that is the property of supremum right for a n. So, what does this say? This says there may be an element here satisfying the following property L minus epsilon to be less than a n for some capital N for some n belongs to n. So, what we wanted we wanted a, some element here. So, we already got some, some something here this may be the same may not be same we, need, we may need to make some changes, but we got some element in n satisfying some property nice. Now, what we need to observe here is this a n see this l is supremum of this whole set. So, we already have this to be less than let me write down this one more time let me copy. So, this is already less than L because because L is supremum of uh, the, the, the whole uh, the, the set A n L is greater than A n that is for sure in particular we have this also ok observe that A is an increasing sequence. So, if, if this A n is greater than this then for every n greater than n for every n greater than equal to n this inequality should remain same right l minus epsilon is less than a n for every n greater than n why because this is an increasing sequence if l minus epsilon is less than a n it should be less than a n for every n greater than equal to n that is the notion of increasing sequence right one half of what we want we want to have l minus epsilon less than a n less than l plus epsilon for all n greater than equal to n. What do, what do we have is only this 
what is what, what we do not yet know is this. But observe that uh, this L is supremum of the set A n in particular the, which means what L is an upper bound for uh, the, the set A n that means in <laughs> L is greater than A n for every n belongs to n in particular for this also this is true L is greater than this. So, if I add an element to the upper bound it will still remain as an upper bound if I add a positive element to the upper bound it still remain as, as an upper bound. So, L plus epsilon is greater than A n. So, this says that uh, A n is a convergent sequence converges to L. So, every monotone every increasing sequence uh, which is bounded is a convergent sequence it converges to the supremum of the, the set A n. This I am leaving to you as an exercise take a bounded sequence assume it is decreasing uh, because it is bounded supremum makes sense infimum also makes sense. So, just take L to be the infimum of the, the subset uh, A n and uh, try to prove that it is uh, convergent and uh, that is all we will see next time.